So hi everybody, today I'm going to present you the in-depth review about this Mizen carbon steel pan and what is my experience with it after a few months of daily using it. So what I did in last period, I prepared a lot of the recipes in this pan, starting from searing some meat, frying and sautering the veggies, also frying some eggs, preparing different kind of risottos, pasta, and I'm ready now to share some impressions so you can know what you can expect from it and what you couldn't. So I tried to go detailed in the different aspects of using this pan and I divided this video into different subtopics which you can find in the description below and which I will mention briefly now so you know where you can go if you need particular information or if you want to just return to the video and go to see something specific. First, we'll go for a pan opening and initial washing, since it is really important for our further seasoning steps. Then I'll cover a seasoning process, shortly explain the science behind the seasoning and based on that give you some insights on which oils are best to use. Right after I'll compare different seasoning practices that I have tested with a mise carbon steel pan and share with you what have worked the best. Finally, I'll give you some real examples of good and bad seasoning practices and provide you with tips on how to build up the non-stick layer over time. At the end, I'll go for a cleaning of a mise carbon steel and what you can expect from it. In second part of the video, you'll be able to see a lot of daily cooking from the last several months. Everything starting from searing meat, preparing tofu, risottos, frying eggs and much more. So you can feel how does the pan behaves with different types of dishes. At the end, I'll give you my overall sum up of impressions and share with you what you can expect from it and what is it good for. So let's not lose the time anymore and go straight for a video. So just after you receive and unbox your mise carbon steel skillet, you will probably find that it has some kind of a rubbery touch. And it is because of the wax protective layer it is used for our shipping. You want to remove all of the wax from the pan since it can interfere later with the seasoning process. Now let me show you in a few quick steps how you can do this efficiently. First thing will be to put your pan under some hot water and apply the smooth side of the sponge so you keep the surface of the pan non-damaged. Take some kitchen soap, put it on both inner and outer sides of the pan and give it a really good wash. After which you can dry your pan with some paper towel. The second step will be to put your pan onto the stove top and heat it up on the low heat. You don't want to overheat your pan here since some wax still remains into the pores of the iron and you don't want to carbonize it. After around 5 minutes on a low heat, you can wipe in your pan with some paper towel to remove any excess of the wax that comes out. Finally, you can repeat the whole process of cleaning and drying your pan once again. And at the end, your pan is ready for the seasoning. So, finally we come to the part that most people have doubts about before starting to use cast iron or carbon steel and it is a seasoning process. Let's make it simple. Seasoning is basically just applying a thin layer of oil on top of your pan and then exposing it to heat which causes the oil to polymerize and create a, some uh, kind of layer that protects your pan and makes it also non-stick for your food. So always the first question is which oil is the best to use and I will try in two minutes to explain you the science behind it and make it clear like what is good and what, what is not the best option. In the future I'll make one video just about the seasoning where I'll go more in depth into this but just simply saying oil it is created from some long chain molecules and those molecules like those are atoms bonded like between and each atom can be bonded with one bond or sometimes it two. Whenever we have like double bonds in those long chains of of fat, we call those fat unsaturated fats. 
So how those double bonds or unsaturated fats are related to our seasoning process? Simply saying, when we apply heat to those long chain molecules, those double bonds can sometimes break and create a bond with another chain. So then we create the net and finally we create that non-stick layer. So the more those double bonds oil molecules have, the better they are for the non-seasoning process. So if you look here on the list, there is the decomposition of different oils that are used for cooking. And the ones that have the most polyunsaturated fatty acids are the best because those polyunsaturated fatty acids have multiple double bonds in the whole chain. So this is why they are great for seasoning process. Some oils like the olive oil have a lot of unsaturated fatty acids but they are not so good for this process because they have a lot of monounsaturated fatty acids which means that the whole chain has just one double bond. So it can create some links between the molecules and build up this layer but it's not so efficient like when you have oils rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids and this is the case for example with some widely available oils like uh, sunflower oil, flaxseed oil or soybean oil so you can apply them and having some really great results. And now the good point to make is when you apply the oil and the heat it is important to pass that point, the smoking point of the oil. And actually the smoking point, when you can see the smoke above your, above your cookware, is when the molecules start to link to each other. And this is how do you know that the reaction is happening. Seasoning process again, simply applying oil and then heating up over that smoking point so you are sure that there is a certain uh, reaction that is happening and there is no stick layer that is creating. So now let's go to the steps. First big question when you are seasoning your pan or any kind of a cookware is where you are going to do that. Is it going to be an oven or it is going to be on a stove top? To say from the beginning uh, I would recommend oven method like the first one because it gets perfectly even seasoning on your pan. So what you do in that case you take some vapor tower and apply a little of oil on your pan, both in the inner side and the outer side. Then you try to remove as much as oil as you can. You spread it and then you try to remove as much as you can so you don't have any excess. In one point you will think there is no more oil left, but believe me, there is a really thin layer which will further polymerize. If you really don't wipe your oil very, very good and you have too much oil left, there is a possibility that during the heating process the oil will carbonize and you will find like uh, dark dots so you want to avoid that and just go with a really good wiping out after spreading that oil and putting it into the oven and that's it you put it there for one hour and regarding temperature you just want to reach temperatures that are 20 to 30 degrees more than smoking point of your oil usually the smoking point is indicated on the bottle or you can find for the type of oil that you're using on the internet it is around 170 180 to 220 30 and it is the whole process you do it for one hour then you left it aside to cool down so you can touch with your hand and you repeat three times, four times. This is how do you create those non-stick layers. On the other side, if you have a stovetop, there are different kinds of stovetops, so the good question is what you can use. First, I would say that induction uh, glass stovetops doesn't work well for this. First, induction ones, they're not good because they usually have automatic sensor that lowers the heat whenever the pan is getting hot so whenever there is no food inside and usually with them you couldn't reach this smoking point so they are not ideal for for seasoning the pan on the other side the glass stove tops can be scratched when you move your pan around in order to reach all the corners season them so again this is not something that i would use when seasoning the pan we left with the gas stove tops and the electric ones with the gas stove tops it is a little easier because you can apply the flame even to the corners and then season the bigger surface and with the electric it's also like feasible to do it you need just to be a little more patient 
This is the process exactly that I'm going to show to you because in a moment when I received the pan I only had the electric stove top but it works perfectly fine if you follow just some simple rules. Now we come to the second question. First one was are you going to season your a pan on the stove top or in the oven? Second one is how much oil do you apply? So in the oven method it's good to apply as less oil as possible just to spread it on the whole surface of the pan even on the handle. But for the stove top method people use two things. Sometimes they fulfill the pan with a lot of oil and sometimes they apply like this technique a really really small amount and spread it. Both work pretty well. I would say the only thing that you don't want is to go somewhere in the middle where you don't have like half inch or something or you don't go to that really small amount but you have some leftovers. Then there is like a high probability that the oil carbonization is going to happen and this is what I'm going to show you as an example also in a video that follows. So how does it look like when you spread the oil but you left a little more and, and you get those, those side effects. One thing that I'll mention here is if you are doing this in a house, believe me, you would like to go for spreading a really small amount of oil, otherwise you will have like a problem with a lot, a lot of smoke. Now let's go to the video and see how does it looks like, how this coating is appearing on the pan after the first layer, after the second layer and also see some troubleshooting or how does it looks like when things go wrong and you have a little more oil so, so you get those carbonizing parts. So the first step, take a little of oil on a paper towel and apply it on your pan. I have also tried with the mist and wax, but after several trials I can't find a big difference. Spread the oil on both inner and outer sides and be sure that you remove any excess of the oil, so wipe it in as much as possible. You want to start with the low heat and increase it little by little for several minutes till you reach the smoking point. You don't want to overheat your pan, so when you start to see the smoke, you don't increase temperature anymore. Move the pan around the corners so you distribute the heat evenly. Remove your pan on the side and let it cool down till you can touch your hand. This is the example how does it looks like when you have the excess oil. So you can see some carbonization that left. If you remove the oil excess well, you get even seasoning like here. Repeat the whole process to the three times and you can see how does it look like after the three layers of coating. You get this nice even dark seasoning. And now when seasoning is finished, there is a second really really important part and it is what you are going to cook after seasoning is finished. So I found that this is the most crucial part in building up a really good non-stick layer. And what I would recommend after a lot of experimenting is that right after the initial seasoning I would go just for a frying process several times, five, six, seven times. And then you can start to use your pan more versatile to apply water, to create some sauces from the fonts, to make risottos, uh, pasta and everything. When it comes to the amount of the oil that I'll use through that frying, at the beginning I'll really use a higher amount of oil, so I'll cover the pan with certain amount. And if you are like me and don't like to apply a lot of oil, but you would like to use your pan as, with as minimal oil as possible, what I do, I first cook something that I won't eat. This is how it comes to the potato pills. So if you don't want to cook your food with a lot of oil, you can start just by frying those potato pills on a high heat with some good thick layer of the oil and do that for two times, three times. And after that, you can continue with the reducing oil and cook with starting from 50, 20 milliliters and after a two free cooks you can reduce it to 5-10 milliliters. It's really important to get that after seasoning process right and then this is the moment that when your non-stick coating is really going to building up and you are getting an amazing performance from your pan. Now let me show you the post seasoning process and how I do it. 
This will be an example of starting with some potato peels. Be sure that you cover your pan with a lot of oil. Fry enough potato peels that the whole bottom is covered and you want to go here to a medium or even high heat and observe some smoke. After 5 to 10 minutes, the potato peels will get a little darker and the whole process is finished. Remove the pan to the side, let it cool down. Now all you need to do is to wipe in your pan with some kitchen towel and it is ready till the next use. Voila! You have your mise en carbon steel pan prepared for your upcoming cooking challenge. So now, let's go to some good and bad cleaning practices with a mise en carbon steel skillet. And if there is one thing that you really want to know about cleaning of the carbon steel, that is, the best way to do it is just a few minutes after the pan cools down when you finish with the cooking. If you left the pan aside for an hour, two or a whole day, the things get much harder. And this is what you don't want. Here, I'll start with an example of cleaning the pan after some meat searing. The first step will be to put your pan under some hot water and scrub it around with soft side of sponge. If you apply rough side non-gently, it can damage some of the coating. Just after the wash, give it a good drying with some paper towel. This won't dry the pan enough, so after this you want to go for uh, 3 or 4 minutes onto the stove top with the low heat. At last you would like to apply a little of the oil and just spray it all around of your pan to protect it from the moisture till the next use. And in the cases when you finish up with the cooking and you don't have some residues that stick to the pan, which is a common thing when you fry with the carbon steel, all you need to do is to take a piece of the paper towel and wipe in your pan all around to remove some residues of the oil. And voila! Your pan is ready to be stored till the next use. In the last case, I'll show you how does it looks like when the food really sticks to your pan and it's again not a big thing, you just need to put a little of water, dump your pan on the stove top, maybe apply wooden spatula to scrub it a little and then just repeat the whole process again. Now I want to show you how does it looks like when you have some carbonization on top of your pan. In this case you can apply the rough side of your sponge but try to be gentle and to focus on those black spots and it will go away quite easily. Additionally, this is the example of some pet cleaning practices when you apply hardly the rough side of the sponge without some need for that. If you would long term apply such kind of practices, it will lower the non-stick abilities of your pan that you are building up over the time. Finally, one really important thing that I would like to mention is not using a dish soap, which I also wanted to demonstrate, so here you can see how does it looks like when you apply some dish soap and you get some more serious coating damage. So now when you know all about the seasoning and cleaning of the mise en carbon steel pan, let's go to a cooking part.
Finally, let me show you the egg test, so you can get some impressions how the mizzen carbon steel pan behaves with delicate food. Here I'll fry the eggs with a pan that is pre-seasoned with the free coatings and that have been used for frying around 10 dishes before this test. Also it's good to mention that I will fry the eggs with just a small amount of oil or to be more precise with 5 ml of sunflower oil. Now let me show you the same test, the exactly the same conditions, just with the pan that have been used for only a few times after pre-seasoning process. As a conclusion, if you want to fry delicate food like eggs or pancakes, with only a small amount of oil, it's important to go for frying 5 or 10 dishes after pre-seasoning before the pan gets versatile for such use. At least, these are the results that I get from a lot of experimenting with the mise en carbon steel skillet. So, after a few months of using this pan, what are my main impressions? I think that you saw that I really enjoy preparing a lot of the recipes and I did a lot of testing with this pan. 
I re-season it I think several times to just figure it out what are the best methods that works for Misen and also I, I did a lot of cooking trying with eggs trying with delicate food to see really what is the performance and I wanted to share the whole whole story with you so if you are somebody who loves to apply different types of frying like a stir fry sautering veggies or searing a bit cuts of meat frying a tofu eggs this is just a piece of perfect piece of cookware and what I would also say that I especially love this pan when I when I sear something and after this leave with this fond that I can take with some kind of liquid like a cream or, or a water and just make make a perfect sauce or fry something else just just after searing the meat or tofu so uh, I would say this is just a, a amazing piece of cookware for that on the other side if you are a person who who more likes to cook the sauces on a daily basis who would like from the beginning to to prepare the dishes with a lot of water and everything i would rather go for some other types of cookware like enameled cast iron about which i'm going to speak in my next videos however as i said for frying for the dishes that starts from the stove top and finish in the oven and also baking it's just something something great that i experienced before buying a cast iron or carbon steel uh, a big question is also like a seasoning it's always a doubt of is it easy how long is going to take and I, I I experimented a lot I tried to make uh, guidelines based on that which I shared with you in a in a previous part of the video and I think that will be all you need to, to start so it all comes to making a few layers of initial seasoning and then just importantly go to fry things like several dishes one after another and after several rounds of frying this pan really gets versatile so you can start using it for for making a different kind of sauces applying more liquid it really gets a better in a performance with other kinds of food so just those initial several times of frying five maybe maybe ten it gives it like a versatility to use it further for different applications one also important thing about such kind of pan is uh, that most people also have a doubt about is cleaning parts so maintenance and I can say in many cases you will finish up your meal just wiping your pan with, uh, with the kitchen towel and it will be enough it will be ready for the next use it also happened that there is some food that left but then again it is easy you just put a little of water as you can saw in the previous parts of the video eventually take some wooden spatula put it a little on the stove top and that's it five to ten minutes after finish your meal i, I couldn't remember that i needed more than that to, to clean it and in a lot of times it finished up just wiping it with uh, some piece of the paper and regarding uh, the ergonomy of the pan how does it feels like how how much weight it is uh, it is around 1.7 kilograms which is a little less than four pounds and it's lighter version than, than the cast iron I would say that the cast iron pan from Lodge for example around this size has more than 5 pounds which is around 2.5 kg but in general it's important to, to get an idea that both cast iron and uh, carbon steel are not something that you can just take and move it around it is not versatile that much for it it has some good weight and it's because of the quality and material but you more apply what I did I, I more applied the movements like left and right and also using the spatula to move the food so it is it is good to be aware about that I would say that handle is really good it's flat what I like and it has a good silicon grip so I always feel a good control with my pan with some of the cookware you have that rounded shape handle and it is sometimes slippery but with this one it is like a really a perfect control and I really enjoy the big cooking surface area you know with some types of cookware the the walls are more steep so the moisture left inside of the food and for certain types of cooking that is what you want but for frying I find it just amazing that those open slopes and high cooking area that allows uh, fast evaporation of the water and that allows you just to perfectly fry whatever you want so in that terms it was just an amazing piece of cookware 
finally for the people who are thinking to switch from the non-stick cookware to some other alternatives I would say this can be a really good plant of choice it doesn't require using a lot of oil when you get used to it after some time it also it's not so hard for for the maintenance and what is most important it will take you for a lifetime so instead of trashing your non-stick pan year after year just it is important to to be aware that you can buy something once and it stays with you you get used to it you get good with it and it stays with you there is no reason also to be extremely careful every time with not scratching it with the temperatures that you use you can put it directly from the stove top to the oven again without temperature limitations so i think it will be a really good uh, cooker piece to start if you want to switch from non-stick to, to some alternatives finally to summarize once again looking overall this is amazing piece of cookware both for like uh, frying things and if you like the dishes that starts on the stove top and finish into the oven you can just take this pan test it and see how does it feels for you Mizen is an amazing young company that gives you 60 days time period to test your pan and to see does it feels good for you and then you couldn't just lose anything you can return it till those two months and they will return your money and what is really important is that give you a lifetime warranty so once when you buy it you get a value for the rest of your life which is really amazing finally if this video provides valuable information for you and if you decided to take one pan for testing and buy it consider buying it from the link below it is affiliate link so i will receive some small commissions without no extra cost for you and that way you'll support me to provide you with even more videos and more great information in the future about cookware if you have any additional questions be free just to ask me in the comments i'll be really happy to share more precisely some details about my experiences and how i feel about this pan so see you in the next videos and keep going on testing of cookware Oh, 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 oh,